Good morning, guys and girls. Thanks a lot for watching. Today is May 15th, 2022, which means we've had our morning coffee. We've listened to the top 10. We've heard which Magic the Gathering cards have been selling throughout the week. But now 71 of you amazing subscribers have come back here for the most compelling analysis of the bottom 10 reserve list cards that no one cares about that we're buying. All right, we're back and we're happy to be here and we're ready to do this. And we're going to pick up exactly where we left off last time, giving a Honorable mention to this card, Mana Vortex. Nobody cares about Mana Vortex. So let's get right into the video. Coming in at number 10 on our list, Raging River. This one's expensive and rightfully so. It's going to cost you $399.99 to get this card into your collection or 130 euro, 17 euro cent. Let's just read the card. Before we do, let's give a little bit of history about this card. It's one of the cards that was not reprinted in Revised Block. Alpha, Beta, Unlimited, that's it. They stopped there. Wizards did not reprint this card going forward. So it sits way down there at the bottom end of the reserve list of the cards no one cares about that we're buying. When you attack, non-flying defending creatures must be divided as opponent wishes between each left and right sides of the river. You then choose on which side of the river to place an attacking creature. And attacking creatures can only be blocked by flying creatures or those on the same side of the river. <laughs> we'll put a much more simplistic worded version up on the screen for you folks. But this card caused a lot of onboard confusion when people were playing, trying to decide which pile to put their creatures in when dividing the permanents on the battlefield in front of them, deciding who could block, who wouldn't block. It's a game mechanic that just changes the way the board develops, and that's probably why the price tag is reflected a little bit higher here. But this card hasn't seen a lot of price action, and like I mentioned earlier, it was not reprinted during the revised block, so this only sits back as far as unlimited, but it's on the bottom end of the reserve list where no one cares about it, so we're buying it. And coming in at number nine, this card, Commander Greven Ilvek. Rage is the only freedom left me, Greven Ilvek. Six dollars and two cents, or three euro, seventy-three euro cents to get this card into your collection. Commander Greven Ilvek costs six mana. He fits into a black deck because he's a seven-five with three black pips and three. When Greven comes into play, you have to sacrifice a creature. He cannot be blocked except by artifact creatures and black creatures. Well, that's pretty much just the fear mechanic. Why do we like this card from the Tempest block? I believe that the lore in Magic the Gathering to include legendary creatures like Greven and the Eldraine of Sengir, cards like that, legendary creatures, I believe have a home in the game that just lasts forever and in some way, shape or form, the game is going to cycle back to these characters and they will eventually become important, which is a part of the reason why they see the bottom end of the reserve list where nobody cares about them but we care about Grevin so we're buying him and the number eight card on our list is this card the brand of ill omen it'll cost you two dollars and thirteen cents to get a copy of this into the collection or two euro forty seven euro cents this is a control card from Ice Age, the first time we ever saw cumulative upkeep printed on a card cumulative upkeep means you gotta pay the upkeep cost once and goes up and keeps costing you more every turn that goes by. But let's read what the card does for us. Target creature's controller cannot cast summon spells. What? You can't play summon spells? Yeah, you put this on your opponent's creature. Even though it's only gonna stick around as long as you can pay the cumulative upkeep, the fact that they can't cast creature spells basically locks them down. For, here's a control card for red. We see it in the brand of ill omen. Let those who bear the branded receive no shelter, no kindness, and no comfort from our people. Lovisa Cold Eyes, the Baldusian chieftain. Brand of ill omen, it's coming in on Brody Alfonso's list, the bottom 10 reserve list cards that no one cares about. And next on our list, this card, the Lodestone Bobble. 
The Lone Stone Bottle is coming in at number seven on our list. It's coming in at $8.98 or six euro, 11 euro cent to get this card into your collection. It costs zero, just like a bobble should. The character on the card looking a little bit like Mark Hamill in the art done by Douglas Schuler. You could pay one and tap to sacrifice the Lodestone Bobble to put four target basic lands from any player's graveyard on top of his or her library in any order. That player draws a card at the beginning of next turn's upkeep. The last part of the card, the draw card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep, was a mechanic that started off in the Alliances set. We saw it on cards like Arcane Denial, this card, Lodestone Bobble, and a few others that see play in Commander to this day. The extra card drawing ability for this card on the next player's upkeep. Plus, if you look at the first card, this is the other part of the card that I find interesting. You get to stack your opponent's deck. If you want to ensure that your opponent's going to be drawing nothing but land for the next four draws, then this card will do that for you. Or has the board been wiped of all lands from an Armageddon type spell and you need to get some more land back into play? The Lodestone Bobble can get you there, but no one cares about the Lodestone Bobble, but we do, so we're buying it. And next up on our list, this card, the Chaos Harlequin, also from the Alliance's block. A $1.50 reserve list card from the Alliance's block will cost you $1.50 to get it into the collection, or one euro fifty-three euro cents. Not only do I like the art on this card, because the new Batman movies that are coming out really make this type of art popular and iconic especially with the Ravnica set that came out it really kind of gives us a, a, an homage to the artwork that we saw in the latest return to the return to return to Ravnica but look at the mechanic of this card there's a 2-4 for 2 red and 2 the Chaos Harlequin will let you pay 1 to remove the top card of your library from the game if it's a land it gets minus 4 minus 0 otherwise it gets plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn I think this is a particularly powerful game mechanic, but back in the day, if you removed a card from the game, that was it. There was no way to get it back. In this day and age, this would say exile the top card of your library, but in this day and age, there are also cards that can be cast from exile, like Scourge or many others. And I believe later on down the road, as Wizards Prince newer sets and cards will be able to be cast from Exile. Exile just becomes a safe space where you can tuck cards away from that can be possibly cast later. There's plenty of cards out there that can be cast from Exile and the Chaos Harlequin from Alliances will let you do that. But nobody wants to play Chaos Harlequin, but we do, so we're buying it. Bringing us to the next card on our list, coming in at the number five slot, Lava Tubes, or any of the other cards from the Ice Age block that have depletion counters on them. This wasn't exactly what we expected with a reprint request for dual lands. We were sadly disappointed. However, for $2.50 or 1 euro 77 euro cents, you can buy a copy of Lava Tubes or just about any other one of the depletion lands from the Ice Age block. That we now know Wizards will choose to reprint lands in any way, shape, form, or fashion that they choose to, except for those on the reserve list. These depletion counter lands are another commander staple for color fixing in multiplayer builds. The Lava Tubes coming in at number 5 on Brody Alfonso's bottom 10 reserve list cards that no one cares about. Which brings us to this card, a Dwarf. Dwarven Sea Clan, $1.35 to get this card into your collection or 1 euro 40 euro cents. The Dwarven Sea Clan from Homelands does none other than 2 damage to any target attacking or blocking creature. You can only use this ability if your opponent has any islands in play. Why do we like this card? Well, you may be starting to see a trend here. The Dwarven creature type, we're fond of it. This is another dwarf, it's a 1 1, and though even being a three mana casting cost dwarf. This is a pretty interesting Tim type of mechanic that can be used to knock off any small creatures on your opposite side of the battlefield or attacking or blocking. Nobody wants to play the Dwarven Sea Clan, but we want to play Dwarves, so we do. So we're buying it, and we're also buying this card, number three on our list, the Dwarven Armorer from Fallen Empires. He's going to cost you $2.25 to get a copy of him into your collection, or €3.90. Euro, euro cent. 
and he's got a really cool beard. For one mana, the 0-2 Dwarven Armorer, he counts as a Dwarf. You can pay one red and tap him to discard a card from your hand to put either a 0-1 or a 1-0 counter on target creature. At instant speed, at any time, you can do this. The Dwarven Armorer. I like the flavor text on this card too. The few remaining pieces from this period suggest the Dwarves eventually made weapons of armor out of everything, even children's toys. Sarpedian Empires, Volume 4. The Dwarven Armor's coming in at the number 3 spot on Brody Alfonso's list. The bottom 10 reserve list cards that no one cares about. Which brings us to the number 2 spot on our list for this week. Demonic Attorney. This card will cost you $4.78 to get it into your collection or €4.06. Euro euro this card's banned. You can't play it. It costs two black and one for the Demonic Attorney. Why are we buying this card? Well, let's just read the card and then we'll get to discussing that. If opponent doesn't concede the game immediately, each player must ante an additional card from the top of their library. Remove this card from your deck if not playing for ante. This card's banned. You can't play it. When you do find it for sale, it's usually in very, very good condition because it hasn't seen a lot of wear. It gets tucked away in a sleeve or in a box somewhere and never touched, you can pick up a mint condition copy of this card fairly easily. And I suggest people consider that when they're looking at the bottom end of the reserve list and cards no one cares about. This may not be playable, but it definitely is an homage to the old lore and the old artwork represented here by Daniel Gellin on Demonic Attorney. Nobody wants to collect a copy of Demonic Attorney, but we do. So. We're buying it. And it brings us to the number one slot on our list. This card, the Debt of Loyalty from Weatherlight. It'll cost you $14.72 to get this card into your collection or €13.63. Euro it's been bottoming out on a downward trend. The Debt of Loyalty from Weatherlight is an instant. What does it do for us? This regenerates target creature and then allows you to gain control of that creature. What? You can cast this to save your own creature or just straight up steal your opponents for two white mana and one at instant speed. It's even got a picture of the weather light in the background. This card is awesome and no one cares about it. And it's on the bottom end of the reserve list. Nobody wants to pay two white and one for their debt of loyalty, but we do. So we're buying it. I killed him because I had to. Stark lied to Gerard, but now I pledge my loyalty to you. If you like this video and you want to see any other videos of the bottom 10 reserve list cards that no one cares about, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Leave a comment in the comments section below if you like the beard on this guy. Here. If you like this video and you want to see any more videos, make sure you tune in next week for the bottom 10 reserve list cards that no one cares about. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank any new subscribers, the 13 of you who have hit that like and subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up or a comment below. We always love to hear from you. And a special shout out goes to the Freetreons, as always, here. We're bringing you more amazing free content for your Magic the Gathering viewing pleasure. We'll talk to you again real soon.